My Modern Warfare 3 settings received rave reviews, and I've already tested it inside of Urzikstan. I got my first win using these settings, and I'm going to give you the best settings for all things Warzone. Keyboard and mouse, controller, graphic settings, and even a way to make your game look even more bright and vibrant like you see in the background. If you guys want to stay up to date on all things Warzone tips, tricks, and guides, you came to the right place. Make sure to subscribe so you find out before your opponents do. Without further ado, let's go ahead and run into it. So I've mentioned this in the past. I have ran all of these settings on the Zombies map. I've, you know, tested all of these as well, not just kind of like a clip and ship, give you the fastest graphic settings. I went through and I tested these individually over the Modern Warfare 3 engine, and it's ported over to the exact same engine here inside Warzone. So we're going to go ahead and start with keyboard and mouse first. Okay, for keyboard and mouse, I always say for sensitivity, I just set my sensitivity to whatever is one flick is a full 360 degree turn for me. For me, that's at 1600 DPI, DPI is 2.6, but for in general, as you see in my hand cam, when I do one flick, that for me is a perfect 360. Okay, from there, I don't mess with anything else in here. Some people have suggested changing the monitor coefficient. I personally don't. Uh, I'm going to be giving an advanced guide in the future. There are some settings in here and in the config file that you can change that make things better, but I haven't fully tested those yet, and I don't want to give you any bad advice. So just stay tuned for that. For keybinds, I have everything set here. I'll kind of point out some things. Keybinds are a lot of personal preference. I have auto move forward set to G. My prone and dive is set to the back button on my mouse. So that way, when I press that back button, I can basically be aiming while I drop shot. Control is my slide. Open parachute is set there. And then also a lot of this stuff is more for my envision controller, but we'll get to that here in a moment. Interact, I've set to F. Open parachute is set to jump. Uh, fire weapon is all pretty much standard. I have next weapon and previous weapon set to one and two. So that way, if I press one or I press two, it's always swapping my weapons. Fire mode is B. Um, trying to think of anything else significant here. You guys can pause and take a look. The only other one that I would suggest is lethal equipment. If you click your center mouse wheel, that allows you to aim and then throw it at the same time. Uh, from there, everything else is pretty much standard. I have the ping set to my front button on my mouse. And then push to talk is set to P, but I have that set to a foot pedal down below my desk. So I just step on that foot pedal and that makes it. Now, what really matters here is the gameplay settings, okay? So when you go in, I'm gonna have the crouch behavior set to toggle. So that way I can toggle up and down. For prone behavior, I have set go to. So that way when I tap it, my body hits the ground extremely fast. So it makes really quick drop shots. We have automatic tactical sprint, which is what you're gonna want inside of Warzone. We're gonna have uh, slide maintain sprint is a new setting. I haven't messed with it. Basically, I'm guessing what that means is when you slide, you'll go straight up out of a sprint. Doesn't really matter too much anyways, because I have automatic tactical sprint set up. So the setting only takes when automatic sprint is enabled. I can't imagine why we would turn that off. So we'll just go ahead and try turning that on. We're going to have a movement guide coming in the next day or two as well, and I'll break into that setting there. I have single tap run, which will bring us straight into attack sprint. Close backpack on sprint will help you save your life if you're stuck inside of a backpack. Um, some other key ones here. All of this turn off, 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 off for your movement. That's going to prevent you from auto mantling onto things you don't want to auto mantle on. For slide dive activation for the mouse and key, we want to have that set to independent. So that way we can slide or dive independently because we have the luxury of having independent key binds for it as well. Slide dive behavior, I have set to standard. It doesn't really matter because once again, we have independent key binds. Make sure we turn off at auto deploy and for movement advanced settings, everything here, I just have set to mantle only. So that way you're not doing the pull up thing. And then everything else is set to free. Sprinting door bash, you want to have you make sure that it's on as well. Combat behavior, one will have hold. Change zoom activation for me is melee, but you can change that as you see fit. The only one that I would really suggest changing in here is depleted ammo weapon switch. Because that way, if you run out of ammo and you try to switch your weapon, and then the game switches it for you, it kind of causes a double switch. For Warzone, this is huge. Make sure you have apply all armor plates on, so that way you don't just put in one plate at a time, stop. One plate at a time, stop. I still don't know why single or apply one is the default setting, because that's probably horrible for a lot of players. Uh, free look activation, I have always enabled. And then everything else is a oh, vehicle camera recenter I have off. So if I'm like looking over my over my shoulder as I'm driving around, I don't want that camera to pull me forward. I think that's a really obnoxious thing. Outside of that, everything else I have set to standard. All right, let's go ahead and move over to controllers. So you guys know I use the Scuff and Vision. There's some special settings that I'll mention here in a moment, but outside of it, it's for every controller player. So controller is set here. For my controller layout, I just have default. Controller vibration, I would suggest turning off. Dead zone, this is a big one. It defaults to like 15 or something. Set that down as low as you can to where you don't get stick drift, okay? For me, it's 3-3. I can set it even lower if I wanted to, but I like to have, you know, 
zero stick drift. Some players, like a lot of pro players, will put it on zero zero so they get intentional stick drift. So that way they're always getting rotational aim assist. It's kind of a, a little aim hack that I might mention in a future video. But for me, that's all I use. For aiming, I use 6.6.8. If you don't know what your sensitivity would be, I suggest starting there. A lot of pro players use that. Most casual players are around there. That's a really good starting point. Okay, from there, we're going to make sure we have our dynamic response curve set. That is so key. You get so much rotational aim assist off of dynamic because it allows you to have fine, small movements and also wicked fast turns. So definitely have that set to dynamic. Uh, for aim assist, make sure that's turned on. Aim assist type set to default. Some people rock black ops, but for the most part, that's been pretty much disproven as a uh, as as placebo just rock it on on standard uh for there we're gonna go over to gameplay once again we're gonna have automatic tactical sprint set slide maintain sprint we're gonna have turned on now i'm always spamming sprint anyways and i have automatic tactical sprint but basically this will continue the sprint after you slide which is probably the best thing to do um now obviously if you slide cancel where you slide in the jump you will no longer be sprinting or sliding so that kind of cancels that I've set to single tap run, grounded mantle have off, airborne off, air automatic off. That'll prevent you from auto mantling and you mantle so fast in this game. It's beautiful. Slide dive behavior. Now for me, I have this set to slide only because I use the scuff and vision, which allows me to remap paddles to slide and dive over in my keyboard settings. So if you have the scuff and vision, what I would do is go over into your keyboard setting, go to your keybinds, and then set up individual keybinds. Like I have a dive set to a bracket key that bracket key is assigned to my scuff and vision. Okay. And then the way that works is then whenever I press B on my scuff, uh, whenever I press B on my scuff, it'll slide because I have set to slide only. And then I can press an individual keyboard for die. If you don't have this luxury, what you can do is you can set up tap to slide where when you tap, you have to tap and release. So it's going to feel a little sluggish. You can slide and then if you tap and hold, you will dive. In Warzone, you definitely want to have the ability to dive because it allows you to move across the map faster. Sometimes you need to be able to dive so you can pull a parachute to make a jump. Um, there are some options as well where you can set this to slide only and you can have a foot pedal set up and assign the foot pedal to a dive key. So that way you have tap slide and tap dive. There's some options here to kind of fix this. The developers are working on a solution to have a dedicated keybind for dive and a dedicated keybind for slide on controller, but that patch has not gone through yet. If you're interested about the scuff uh, and vision, you can check that out in the uh, pinned comment and the description. Or actually, it'll, it'll be in the description. You can get a you can get a discount. This is my design, but hopefully the developers make a solution so you don't have to buy a really nice piece of hardware to fix it. Parachute auto deploy. We're going to make sure we have that off. Plunging underwater. Make sure we have that set to free. Sprinting door bash. We want on. Ledge climb. We're going to have mantle only. We don't want to do that pull up thing. Um, aim down type behavior. We're going to have set to hold. Change doom activation. I have set to my sprint key. Everything else here is pretty much set as standard. Obviously, make sure we change our armor plate behavior to all. It is set to apply one, and we definitely want to make sure we have that set to all. For Warzone, we want to make sure we have prioritized interact as well. That means that when we tap our square, it's going to instantly pick up that item as opposed to what it defaults to, which is like, I think, prioritize reload, where you have to press and hold to open up doors, press and hold to get into cars, and you definitely don't want that. Backpack controls, we're going to have directional. Um, depleted ammo, I have that once again turned off. And vehicle camera recenter, I have that set to off as well. Everything else should be set to standard. All right, let's get over into graphics. Now, once again, I have tested all of these graphics settings for max like frame rate in game. I'm getting well over 200 frames in 4K, but more importantly, I'm making sure my game doesn't look like. We'll leave it to that. Okay, so there are going to be some settings here that I'm going to show you that you can change to look more stunning without torching your frame rate so follow it step by step obviously you want to make sure you're playing in full screen exclusive i'm using a 4k 32 inch monitor with 160 refresh rate okay from there i changed my brightness up to 55 that brings out a lot of the shadows default 50 i think is a little bit too low nvidia reflex low latency make sure we have that set to on plus boost or efficiency mode do not put this in efficiency make sure to set this to custom because you want to be giving max power to your PC. You don't want to, uh, I mean, RIP your power bill, but make sure you set it to custom. Okay, uh, focus mode is uh, is irrelevant. Custom frame rate, make sure you set that to unlimited. And then from there, we're gonna move over to quality. Over in quality, 
Make sure you have your render resolution set to 100. Do not use dynamic resolution. Set fidelity FX cast to 90 or 100 or 50. It makes the game and text a little bit sharper. For the VRAM scale, I have that set to 90. If you notice any jitters, you can bring that back to about 80 or 70, which will help solve some of those jitters. And look at these ones where I have stars on them, okay? These are ones that make a significant difference in the quality of your game without hurting your FPS. So yes, you could set this to very low and maybe get like 1% more frames, but it makes your game look horrible. So I suggest setting to at least normal. Texture filter anisotropic, same thing. Try setting that to normal. And then all of these with stars, you can go in game and you can see the difference. So like for this one, for example, the detail, detail quality level. Yes, I could have this blocky, ugly sunflower, but you know, maybe I want a little bit of textures. And yes, I may lose 510 FPS, but my game's gonna look beautiful. And let's be honest, the difference of 1% FPS is not why you're getting slammed in game. So if you're getting slammed, your game might as well at least look beautiful while you're at it, okay? Uh, particle resolution, very low. Absolutely put it to very low. It, you, as you can see here, it makes the game look a lot crisper and all these particles are really high res, but it tortures your FPS by like five to 10%. It is not worth it. Throw that thing on very low. Bullet impacts we want on so we can see our recoil patterns. Persistent effects off. Shader quality, once again, is a starred one where it makes your game look significantly more beautiful. For a small uh, shader is about a medium impact, but it, it makes your game look really, really stunning. So I would consider playing around with that to see what you think looks best. Automatic text streaming off. Uh, stream quality off, shadow quality. Once again, look up here. Ugly shadows, no resolution, but when you set it to medium, now we can start to pull out individual lines, like the trees that look all blocksy and pixelated. When you throw it on normal, looks a little bit more beautiful. Everything else, off, 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 low. Tessellation, off, low, off, off, off. None of that stuff matters, and it's just going to torture your FPS, and it's not going to affect the visual quality of your game, in my humble opinion. Field of view, I have set to 117. Make sure our ADS is affected. Weapon field of view, we want set to wide so it's smaller in our screen. Same thing with the vehicle field of view. Turn off all that motion blur. We want to, don't want any of that crap on our screen. Uh, film grain set to zero. First person camera move set to least, so that way our screen isn't shaking all the time. Spectator camera, make sure we have it set to game perspective, not the tactical helmet camera, because no one wants to look at that. And then inverted flashbang is totally up to you. Oh, and one other quick thing. So as you see, I have this all set up, these stars. When you go, you can right click, you can add something to your favorites. So now when I'm in game, I can see my essential settings, like my slide dive behavior, my automatic tactical sprint, what input device I'm using. But most importantly for the graphics settings, your game will run like a dream with the settings that I gave you. And then for all of these ones that I have starred, just give those a try and think about changing them and see which ones give you the most benefit in game. Just go into plunder, sit in a corner with a lot of information that you can kind of assess it off of and just toggle these settings and see which one fits your style. And then that'll allow you to get the best balance of performance and beauty, like beauty, because that's all based off of individual PC. So change those settings, see what you see changing in game and see how your frame rate changes and then make the decision based off of your PC. Okay, so for audio settings, I have it set to home theater, but I also have a tune for my buddy Art is War. If you're just playing on uh, your, your PlayStation, your Xbox, I would suggest running either PC speakers or headphones because that kind of brings everything up condensed. If you're really interested in like how to really hear the most footsteps, my buddy Art has a tune. You can look up Art is War. He can help you out there. From there, make sure your music is turned all the way off so it's not distracting you in the final circle. I have my voice chat turned pretty low. And then the dialogue of like, enemy airstrike is way too loud. I can still hear it at level 50. Voice chat I have on. Microphone, make sure you set that up to where you can hear yourself. And then outside of that, I just have war tracks, juggernaut music turned off, and then tinnitus sound reduced because that's the really high-pitched whine that kind of gets in your ear. From there, interface. This one's really, really key. Okay, I have all my subtitles turned off. For color customization, this can make a big difference with the quality of your game. If you want to see the actual major differences, it will be linked in the pinned comment and the description bringing you over to my filters video that causes this beautiful look. My buddy Art made some custom filters. He made some new ones for MW3 that will be in that video, but I'm still using my old one for MW2 that I mentioned in the in the video um, that you can watch after this pinned comment description. Okay, what you can do though, is you can go through, you can set your HUD color, color palette and go through and pick some of the more dynamic color options. Like maybe this yellow isn't as bright, so I choose this one. The blue is not as bold, so I can choose a more bold blue one. Okay, but what you can really do to bring it out is go to color filter, set to filter two, set to both, and then crank it up to max strength on both. And it makes a really nice difference in really bringing out some pop in your color that you wouldn't otherwise get. Not nearly as much as this, but it's still pretty impressive. Uh, from there, 
We're going to go down, make sure we have a mini map set to square, make sure our mini map is rotating, and then set your crosshairs to static. Unfortunately, they still haven't fixed this. When you snap your aim, you see your crosshair kind of float. And that is accurate for where your gun is aiming in game, but I think it really messes with people's aim subconsciously, and it's just a lot cleaner to have your crosshair static. And frankly, it literally says, static reduces motion sickness. I still think they need to just completely get rid of this mechanic. So in the meantime, I would suggest running static. Okay, uh, from there, make sure you have your hit marker visuals. If you didn't know in this game, a regular hit marker will be a single X. A headshot hit marker will be a double X, as you see in that picture right there. Um, let me move my camera out of the way so you can see it, which helps you clarify whether or not you got a headshot or a body shot. And then once you get the kill, it'll be either a double red X or a single red X or a headshot kill or a regular body shot kill. For telemetry, I have set to custom and I have the essentials turned on. FPS counter, server latency, packet loss, GPU time, and CPU time. And then from there, everything else is pretty standard, but I make sure to skip the introduction movie and turn off tool tips and gameplay tips because I don't like all of that stuff getting in my face while I'm trying to play. But ladies and gentlemen, we've already gotten one win. Our first game inside of Urzik Stand, we won. If you're interested in these filters, that'll be linked in the pinned comment and the description and also at the end of this video. There's some additional videos over on my second channel where I teach people how to get better. That's where that video is. I do coaching as well, where you guys send me your coaching footage and I review your footage to help you get better. So if you're interested in that content, go check all that out over on the second channel linked in the pinned comment. Without further ado, Join me live over on Twitch to catch out some gameplay. Hope these settings helped out. I had rave reviews on these settings for helping people get better. I also have a video over on my second channel for PS5 specific settings, Xbox specific settings, and Windows specific settings as well. So if you're interested in really honing everything, you can check out all that content over on my second channel. But without further ado, I'm going to get back in and play some more Warzone. Hope you guys enjoy this game, and I'll see you all in the next one. Probably movement guide coming out tomorrow. Peace.